Well, a frustrating day to end a frustrating year. And, uh, you know, just take the first half. You, you know, have a great goal line stand. You come out and throw an interception on third down and uh, give them a short field. Third downs killed us in the first half defensively. It was evident. I think they were six of eight. Uh, where, you know, whether it was uh, his legs or arm, uh, but we, we, we got to get off the field in those critical, critical situations on third down. We, we drive the ball down the field. We, we call a boot, and no, no one 20 yards of our tight end in the flat, we drop the ball. So you just can't do those things against a good football team. You have to make those plays, those routine plays, uh, when you play a good team. And uh, so the uh, latter half of the season, we've struggled offensively. I don't think we're far off. I think we've got a good, young, talented roster. Uh, I think we've got some good players in our program. I'm extremely frustrated for them. Uh, but uh, we've got we to gotta make some changes moving forward. I'm not addressing anything as far as that's concerned, so don't ask. Uh, but we need to get better. We had a great crowd today, and I appreciate our, our, the positivity of our fans. I know they're frustrated. We are too. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll, we, we will be better moving forward and uh, looking forward to getting started recruiting tomorrow. So I'll open up for any questions. Raise your hand and get a microphone to you, Will, how close was Brian toward going today or close at all? Yeah, not as close as, as maybe I let on to be. But, uh, you know, he's had an unbelievable career here. Uh, and I can't say enough about his contributions to South Carolina. And, the, and he told me before the game how much it meant to be a Gamecock and how much he enjoyed his time here. And frustrated, obviously, with this season. but. Uh, you know, in the recruiting process is exactly what I told Brian was going to happen. He's going to walk out of here with every record at the University of South Carolina, and I saw that, I envisioned that, and that's what happened. So really proud of him, and, and I just really want to thank, and I hate to even start mentioning, but all of those guys, former players, Sterling Sharp, Sidney Rice, Bruce Ellington, Debo Samuel, um, Alshon, uh, uh, Pharaoh Cooper, uh, the McKinley family, uh, I can't say enough about the support that they have for us, for our staff, for our team, and what we're doing moving forward. And I really appreciate that. And that was a touching moment. Uh, it tells you something about being from the state of South Carolina and coming to the State University and playing, being a Gamecock and uh, what it can do for you and how powerful it can be. And Brian certainly has uh, deserved that. What was the biggest issue today offensively? And I guess have you pinpointed one specific thing that's happened over the last three weeks that you can – we, we, you know, Colin, we're struggling in a lot of areas. It, there's a lot of you, – know, you can stick – I don't have enough fingers to put in the dike right now, and it's a confidence is, an, is a major issue. Uh, but we're having a hard time, uh, you know, in a lot of areas. And, and to sit there and, and blame one person, I'm not going to do that. I mean, at the end of the day, we need to be more productive, and that's the bottom line. You know, if you, if you, you give one reason, it's an excuse. That's kind of the way it is nowadays. So that's the bottom line. So I'm tired of talking about it. At the end of the day, we need to be, get better. That's the bottom line. You know, no one was bitching last year when we averaged 425 yards and we averaged over 30 points a game. You know, and we've, we've struggled this year. You know, just call it like it is. And, and uh, there's a lot of different areas that are at, at fault and it needs to get fixed, and that's what I'm going to do. What was the thinking, kind of the reasoning behind having Brian back on the field and having, uh, instead of signaling, having the quarterback come over for the plays? We wanted to be able to milk the clock as much as we could and then use tempo, utilize tempo as best we could at times in the game. And that was uh, kind of our plan going in. And uh, obviously, when it becomes a 24-3 game, it's hard to continue to milk clock. And then you're not trying to win the game. And hell, we're trying to win the game. So uh, that was sort of the thought behind it. How would you evaluate Ryan Holinsky's progress over the season? And has he been relatively healthy over the last month or so? Mm -hmm. He's healthy. I mean, if he's cleared to play, then he's healthy. That's the way I, I term it through our medical people. So he's been fine. Uh, there's no one 100% right now, Gene. That's, that's part of playing college football, pro football, whatever level you want to be on. Um, but uh, again, I think he's progressed well. What we're asking him to do is very difficult. I've told him that multiple times. And there's a lot of times we need to play much better around him. And then there's some times Ryan will tell you that he needs to play better. So the bottom line is overall, we need to improve. You say that you're you're close. What gives you the feeling that you're close? What do you see that makes you think you're close? The effort that we have throughout the entire season, especially in the latter part of the season when things weren't going very well, uh, the good young talent that we've recruited, the good young talent that we have coming, uh, uh, I see a lot of positive things and some key positions that we're going to be very good. So I, I feel very confident in that. The 
the locker room today, specifically the guys who are coming back, what was their mood? How do they feel about they're that? Hurting. They're hurting. I mean, they're, there's no doubt. That's that's another good sign. Uh, you know, they're, they're hurting. They hurt for our seniors because obviously the way the season has gone is not certainly something that, that uh, we wanted them to, to have to experience. So, um, you know, it's a hurting locker room. Coach, I know you already addressed uh, Brian Edwards. Can you talk about him and your relationship with him and what you think will make him successful, not only in football but also in life, too, and the time you spent with him? Brian Edwards? Yes, sir. No, oh, man, that guy's got an unbelievable personality. He's extremely bright. Um, he's got a great people skill. Uh, you know, people, he, people gravitate to him. They want to be around him. They want to be a part of what he's doing. Uh, he's got a tremendous work ethic. You know, John and Michelle, his parents, are awesome people and raised him right. And uh, I just think he has so much going for him outside of being a good football player, which he's a really good player. And uh, I think people are going to start to see as he moves through this evaluation process and the senior bowl and the combine and the different things he's about to go through, the more and more you're around him, the more and more you want him to be a part of your organization. Coach, obviously a disappointing season, but what positive can you take out of this season to going into the off season and preparing for next August? Well, I think, you know, from a standpoint of uh, the youth, you, t you take Ryan, you take DeCarrion, uh, both guys playing at the quarterback position, DeCarrion playing at the receiver position as we continue to move forward. We'll, we'll see how that continues to manifest itself. Ja'Kai Moore and, and, uh, and Jalen Nichols. Two young players that played extremely well on the offensive line and should get four out of the five back on the offensive line. Uh, Nick Muse is a guy that was a great addition to our football team and really at receiver, Chavis Dawkins and, and Brian. Of course, Brian's a huge loss, but you got Xavier Leggett, a young player that continued to develop as the season went. You got Shy back in the slot. Uh, we, we need some young running backs to come in and they're ready to play. But, you know, Kevin Harris and Deshaun Fenwick did some nice things for us. You got Parker White back as a kicker. We need to replace Joe, obviously, at the punter position. And really, on, you know, on defense, you lose J Javon. You know, TJ's been a three year starter and, and Dennis Warnham. And past that, we got everybody back. So we've recruited well. We've got good players at the position that I've all got a lot of experience defensively. Jamie Robinson had a really good year. John Dixon played well for us at corner. Uh, Jamar Brown's going to be a really good linebacker for us moving forward. Zach Pickens is a really good player inside. Joe Anderson is an end. Uh, so we've got some good players in the program that have all gotten it, some valuable experience, some quicker than we wanted to have it have happen for them. But it is what it is. You mentioned kind of hitting the road for recruiting coming up right now, but when does sort of your self-evaluation process going forward in the early part of the offseason, when does that kind of begin? As far as the season's concerned? As far as looking back at kind of what you've done, uh, what you kind of have going forward, that kind of stuff? Well, there's a different evaluation from, from your staff, from the players, uh, from scheme standpoint. Obviously, from scheme standpoint, you got to watch the film to, to evaluate those sort of things, but you're constantly evaluating everything in your organization. Did Brian call plays offensively today? Mm -hmm. What was kind of the game plan going in? Did how did y'all think y'all'd be able to move the football on them? We felt like in you know that we you know they're not as big as they've been up front. We felt like we could get some things in the gap schemes up front for some of the zone schemes collecting them. We felt like in in order for us to have had success, they we, we needed to run the football and we needed to be hard headed about trying to run the football. And then with that being said, try and take some shots down the field, which we did and we missed. You know, uh, call it like it is. Good call in the third and one situation. We leaked Markway through the line on the third and one. Uh, but we needed to hit more shots and be more stable in the run game, stay on the field more on third down. But that's what I've been saying for a while now. Will, you mentioned that confidence is a problem now. Were you talking uh, specifically about Ryan or the team in general? And how do you instill confidence or work on confidence in between now and when you play another game? Well, I think when you get into your off-season program, as you continue to work hard in the weight room, you continue to work hard as far as film work is, is concerned. Uh, for young players especially, the game continues to slow down for them. Uh, you, when you get stronger, when you get faster, when you get quicker in the, in the weight room, you're obviously going to you know, uh, create more confidence for yourself as a player as far as those things are concerned. And that, that's what you can do in the off-season program. And then as you move into spring ball, you want to have success on the field. You want all those reps in the off-season program to transfer to spring ball and have success on the field. And that creates more confidence for you. And then it creates great confidence for you as you head into the summer. And then you go into training camp and no different than spring ball. You're developing confidence on the field and in your trait and what you do and how you are defining your role on our football team. And then come when we play Coastal Carolina starting off next year, then you're getting ready to go game time and get ready to go play. And hopefully that all carries over to that point And then you gain confidence as the year goes on. 
but you got to have success to do that. What was kind of the process in, in formulating what you ended up doing with Jay Urich today, and what was that like kind of throwing him in there with what happened to DeCarion? Well, DeCarion was under concussion protocol. He did not practice during our off week. He did practice on Tuesday and a little bit on Wednesday and, and, was, and had some symptoms. And so, again, player of safety is the most important thing, and our medical staff pulled him. So um, Jay was a guy athletically that could do some things running the football. We wanted to try and employ some of those things with him. Uh, if we were able to get to that. Coach, you, you alluded to the idea that you needed to make some changes, whatever those proved to be. Do you feel like you need to make radical changes with your scheme, or is it more that you think you need to tweak things? No, I think we need to tweak some things, you know, as far as Heath, how we're looking at them. And, and uh, you know, I think that uh, I don't want to expound much past that right now. Two questions, but you mentioned getting four starters back on the offensive line. Have you talked to any of these juniors about? No, I, I told, I'm going to talk to them after the season, like I've said multiple times. I should know if any conversation no. happened. Um, and you've kind of mentioned before. Do you feel like this offense can be more explosive next year with getting guys like Xavier back and, and potentially Shy back for his senior sure, year? Sure, we need to have a great off season. We need to have a great spring ball. We need to have a great summer program and a great training camp. And that's all understanding that part of it. Well, and you talk about uh, the the need to run the football today, and how much of a priority was it to get it to Feaster in particular, with you know his experience at Clemson uh, in the past? And can you talk a little bit about what he brought to this team this year? Well, tavian has been outstanding. He's been a model citizen. He's extremely bright. He's a really good player. Uh, he's been a huge addition to our program in one year. He's been a huge positive impact in everything we've asked him to do. I told him about three or four months ago, I wish he was an underclassman. I, I wish he, we had another year with him. Uh, but he's just a guy you like having in the locker room. As far as our opponent, they had nothing to do with his carries. He's, he's performed well and done a nice job for us, and that's why he earns the opportunities to carry the ball. Season program for the kids. When does that start? What's the kind of the schedule for them going forward? We'll, we'll, we'll iron that out next week. When, when you came in, you said that what you had learned from your Florida experience was that you needed to score more points. Mm -hmm. For you personally, just to have a year like this where you, know, you only score one touchdown in the last three games, don't break 27 against anybody yeah. that's an FBS team, how frustrating for you on a personal it's, level is it to it's be there? It's extremely frustrating, you know. And again, last year was more what we need to be when we averaged over 30 points, which has only happened five times in the last 15 years here at the University of South Carolina, and averaging over 400 yards only three times in 15 years here, who had probably the greatest play caller in college football history, Steve Spurrier, in those 15 years, right or wrong. you agree or disagree? And we had a great year, and that's more of what we need to be. And we just didn't manifest itself to that. Uh, you know, I can list some issues that I think were probably contributing to that, but that's called excuses, and I'm not going to make excuses. Bottom line is we weren't productive enough, and we need to get better, and we will. Coach, there was a moment of, of silence for Coach McKissick before the game. I know mm -hmm. your tenures didn't really overlap, but I was wondering if you'd ever had a, any interactions with him during your coaching tenure. I actually had a lot of interaction with Coach McKissick, and he was nothing but first class to me. Uh, actually called me early in the year and uh, told me not to listen to any of y'all. Uh, but uh, I really appreciated uh, the sh short time that I was around him. Uh, he's the greatest coach of all time. You are what your record is. He's won more games than anybody, 621. And, uh, and I appreciated the time I had with him. Yeah, Will, what kind of a sign of hope can you give to your fans uh, who just see the divide between your program and Clemson getting larger as you could compare the two teams like out there well, I, you know, Phil, that's all in the eye of the beholder, you know, in my opinion. Um, we've had more success than any staff in its first three years at the University of South Carolina. We've won as many games in the Southeastern Conference as any staff at the University of South Carolina. And I'm not happy with that, but I am just saying that there is some positive progress for us to at least latch on to. We went to more bowl games in our first three years than any staff in its first three years at the University of South Carolina. And as I said earlier, we have a really good young roster coming back. And obviously, do we need to address some things in our program? Yes, we will. And moving forward, and I look forward to having a long tenure here at the University of South Carolina and coaching here for a long time and, and getting this thing turned. And that's what, you know, I, I, I look forward to the opportunity and the challenge. Have a great day.